Hi there, this is Michael. This is my uh, assignment for PIDP 3250, Student Engagement Techniques, um, TS6, Promoting Student Autonomy. Um, this is based on the uh, self-determination theory from Desi and Ryan um, and Carol Dweck, The Growth Mindset. Um, so Carol Dweck talked about the uh, fixed mindset versus the gross, growth mindset. Um, and a fixed mindset assumes that our character, intelligence, and creative ability are static givens, um, which we can't change. Um, the, the growth mindset, on the other hand, thrives on challenge and sees failure not as evidence of unintelligence, but as a springboard for growth. Um, so TS6 is basically um, student accountability and um, promoting student autonomy. Um, so there's um, basically there's 12 steps. Um, and basically um, the 12 steps are, are identifying and nurturing what students want and need. Um, a teacher in a nurturing approach needs to um, adopt a highly dedicated and unselfish approach. So Bates in 1998 basically said, um, you need to deny the teachers um, subject matter expert and allow the students to develop their own kind of subject matter expert ability. Um, the second step is to have students' internal states guide their behavior. Um, this was, uh, I think this was done by the University of Sweden. It's all in the um, references. So each slide I've referenced with uh, who came up with the theory and the, the basis of it. Um, but basically having their own internal state guide the student behavior rather than using incentives. So the students are going to do it because they want to do it because they see the value of doing it versus getting some kind of um, reward for it. Same as a, uh, you know, little children do things because they think it's, they're going to get something for it. Um, the third step is to encourage active participation. Um, now, active participation here again is, is where the autonomy comes into the student, where students, they engage in the activity because they see the value of it. And the motivation leads to a more positive educational outcome compared to controlled motivation or um, a motivation that was, or Caesar or Sini, 2017. Um, but uh, yeah, active participation is based on the students wanting to participate versus um, understanding that they get something from it. It's the intrinsic versus the extrinsic. Um, fourth step is encourage students to, to accept more responsibility for their learning. Um, and the question becomes, okay, how do you get students to accept the responsibility? So, um, you know, you need to get the students to ask and find answers to questions. Um, and they can do this anytime, anywhere, any place. Um, they can acquire the good study skills in order to do what they need to do. They can take it, take advantage of, you know, the off hours where the uh, instructor has, you know, free time to Skype or to call or to email or whatever. Um, collaborate with other students. Um, and then uh, the other, you know, find profession professionals who can mentor them. The fifth step is to provide structured guidance. So much like PIDP, where we get given um, assignments and it's up to us to do them in a certain time frame, but we get given the structure of how to do it. It has to be done a certain way. Um, and that keeps the overall package of students work or the, the aggregate of the students work, it gets to be packaged the same. So you want to develop a consistent shared understanding of, of what the um, 
quality work or quality performance looks like, um, develop common terminology and structure to the assignments, and um, make informed judgments about whether or not students have demonstrated uh, subject matter knowledge. And I would assume that based on the work that we're doing here, this video that I'm doing is going to be judged as to whether or not I know what I'm talking about. Um, six, provide optimal challenges. Um, this is a um, pretty in-depth subject on its own. I didn't get too much into it because that would take up my entire video, but um, there's something called the Yerkes-Dodson Law. And I'm just going to read this. Law suggests that optimal level of arousal for best performance in learning tasks. Ideally, the instructor's expectations should match the abilities and inabilities of the student. Um, I provided a reference for this. Um, if this something, if this is something you're interested in, really take a look at it. Um, it's a huge document and um, very, very, very interesting stuff. Um, seven provide positive and constructive feedback. Um, so here's another one where it's shown that um, positive and constructive feedback has to be done in a timely manner. So when it's um, done, when the student has demonstrated proof of learning, it uh, positively reinforces, I guess we're talking Pavlov's dog. So it, um, it has to be done timely. If you wait too long, the moment is lost and the student might not connect the feedback to the fact that they've done something in a certain way. Um, the eighth step is to give emotional support. Now this gets to be kind of a wedge issue because um, it's not about, I, I think this is going to be more along the lines of when students self-doubt, oh I can't do it and you need to basically as the instructor instruct them that yes they can. Um, there's something called the social and emotional learning. Um, there are five core competencies. Um, one is recognizing one's emotions, values, strengths, and limitations, and being self-responsible. Um, this is by uh, P. Weisberg. He's a PhD psychologist, and it's all about um, responsible decision-making, self-management about personal and social behavior. Um, here again, really, really interesting stuff, but I can only literally just scrape the surface of it because it's such a very deep and in-depth um, subject matter to, to delve into. Um, number nine, acknowledge students' expression of negative effect. Here again, we're getting into kind of an emotional thing, um, but this is where the instructor is going to listen to the negative feedback and um, not interrupt the student when they're talking and, and um, kind of hear the person out. Um, and also be aware of your responses. So your body language, your tone of voice, you don't want to be dismissive. You don't want to operate in a way that makes the student think you're not caring or listening to what it is that they're talking about. Um, number 10 is to communicate value in uninteresting activities. So, um, there's a great arg article on this um, there in the references, but suffice to say, um, students need to be aware that everything that they're going to do in their in their um, educational life or even in their life isn't going to be uh, a great, exciting, um, totally uh, engaging task. Kind of like doing the dishes. Um, but you have to do the dishes or when you want to make your fancy dinner, um, there's no plates to put anything on. So, so although doing the dishes isn't necessarily a uh, fun and exciting task, it's a required task in order to kind of live your life in a productive way. Um, so, so step 11 is to give choices. Looks like we had a little bump in our recording and it may have paused and we don't know necessarily when, but hopefully it'll all do good in playback. Um, so yeah, give choices. How do you give choices? Well, you give some choices as to the materials to be used, um, how to structure the class space, in other words, how to arrange desks or anything like that. Um, provide opportunities for students to choose project-based project learning. Um, 
consider the impact of time as a learning variable subject to student choice and also provide choice about subject matter. Um, here again, these things have to be somewhat flexible, but not too flexible. You still have to teach your course material. You still have to do what you have to do. Um, number 12, direct with can, may, could, instead of must, need, should. Um, there's also um, some interesting reading on this, and this is basically based on um, direct versus indirect speech. So there's a few other slides I'll just quickly go through here. This is the self-determination theory model. And then there is the um, two mindsets of Carol Dweck. And then here are my references. I'll just go through them quickly because I'm really going over on the time. And then of course, Creative Commons licensing, all rights reserved pretty much. Anyways, this is Michael, hope you enjoyed it. Sorry I've gone over, PIDP 3250 instructional strategies. Over and out. Come on, where are you? There you go.